Hi, Melissa. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Very good. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Tell us a little bit about um, what you do as a cardiologist. Okay, so I uh, am an invasive, <laughs> non-interventional cardiologist at McLaren Macomb in McLaren, Oakland. Um, I do uh, both outpatient and inpatient cardiology. I uh, see a lot of people with chest pain, shortness of breath, fatigue, palpitations, um, you know, treat all aspects of uh, heart disease. Okay. And um, when we talk about heart disease, is it everything to do with the heart? Is it blood pressure and heart? Because I know my grandmother, for instance, um, she has a medication for her heart and she has a medication for her blood pressure. Does it all go together under cardi cardiology? Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. um, not everyone needs a cardiologist for certain things, okay. um, but we do uh, treat things like blood pressure, um, heart rates. Uh, we also um, get a little bit more involved sometimes if you've had a heart attack or a blocked artery or if you've had an arrhythmia uh, or congestive heart failure. Um, we also focus on other risk factors like diabetes, cholesterol, smoking, mm -hmm. weight management, all of those things. Okay. So it's a pretty comprehensive uh, field. Uh, we do rely a lot on the primary care physicians um, you know, to screen people and refer to us and we work a lot uh, times hand in hand with them on things like blood pressure and diabetes and things. Okay, so in cardiology is the goal a healthy heart? Yeah, so we um, obviously love for people to have healthy hearts and you know we see a lot of people um, you know both before they're diagnosed with heart disease and mm -hmm. after they're diagnosed with heart disease. Okay. So some people come in because they have a strong family history and want to know. Be proactive. You know, is there something I can do to lower my risk? Um, but then we also see people that have, you know, already had their heart attack or something like that. Um, and we do a lot of screening, um, you know, based on certain symptoms uh, for various kinds of heart disease. We get nervous when you feel bad. Um, okay. So if your blood pressure is low, um, that's okay if you feel good. Mm -hmm. If you're lightheaded or dizzy or really tired, can't get up and go, um, short of breath, things like that, then we get a, you know, a little nervous that it might be too low. Mm -hmm. Some people naturally have lower blood pressure. Um, and, you know, some people may have been on medication and then lost some weight, maybe need less medication. So okay. we just have to adjust it based on how you feel. When you hear words like congestive heart failure, um, you know, is that something, does it, is it as drastic as it, as it sounds or is it treatable or um, what is that? So congestive heart failure, um, classically we think of it as fluid building up in the lungs because the heart can't pump efficiently to get that you know, fluid out. And people mm -hmm. get short of breath, they get swelling in their legs, gain some weight, um, mm -hmm. mostly can't breathe. So congestive heart failure has a number of different causes. The number one cause um, you know, is probably uh, blocked arteries and high blood pressure. Um, but there's a lot of treatment options out there. We can treat the cause, we can treat the symptoms. Um, it is a serious problem, but it is very treatable. Um, requires, you know, compliance and follow-up and, you know, uh, active effort on the patient's, uh, you know, perspective as well as the physician. But there's definitely treatment options out there and cardiology is one of those fields that's Great, and then it's always advancing, and there's always, you know, looks looking. We're always looking for something else, you know, to help, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's medicine or a device or you know some kind of intervention that can, you know, help prolong uh, people's lives. But many people live a long time with congestive heart failure. Yeah, I think that you know I've I've had conversations with people where they say, "My mom has congestive heart failure. I don't know how much longer she has, or that sort of thing." But um, really, it's something that's treatable and, and manageable. So it sounds worse, I think, you know, it sounds so scary when you, when yeah. you think about it, but um, that's good to know that it, it is treatable. It is, and some manageable. people have a worse case than others, and, you know, mm -hmm. your survival is less than if you didn't have congestive heart failure, mm -hmm. but uh, there's definitely treatment options out there. Okay. Statistics show that women are at the greatest risk for heart disease and um, die from um, heart attacks and, and things of that nature. Why is that? So the number one killer in both men and women is heart disease. Okay, so and it's not limited to women, it's men too. Yeah, and a lot of times we think, 
you know, heart disease, meaning coronary artery disease or blocked arteries mm -hmm. causing heart attacks affect men, and they do, but they also affect women. Um, and it's the number one killer. Um, it kills more people than breast cancer wow. um, and other cancers. Um, and it's something that, you know, we like to bring awareness um, to because Sometimes uh, women have different symptoms than men do, and sometimes they present later or, you know, think it's something else um, when, you know, really it's, you know, a critical, you know, problem. And we just need to focus on, you know, educating and getting that out there so people know what to look for. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's the number one killer, killer <coughs> of both men and women. So um, what, are, what are some of the risk factors? Like what makes this so incredibly... Um, you know, a, such a, a, a big factor for, for everyone. So um, common risk factors, mm -hmm. high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, uh -huh. um, obesity, um, you know, other things, uh, things you can't change is your age. Uh, as you get older, your risk goes up. Uh, your genetics, so your family history matters a lot. Okay. Um, so there's a lot of different risk factors, you know, that some you can change and some you can't. Mm -hmm. uh, smoking is another one. So, you know, society um, inherently has, you know, a, a bigger risk as you get older because we're living mm -hmm. longer. Um, but the things that you can do, you know, is, you know, stay active, watch your weight, quit smoking and then control mm -hmm. your blood pressure, blood sugars, things like that. So, you know, so there's diet a, and exercise. Exactly. What about the environment? Is, it, is our environmental factors a Probably the biggest thing is probably the food. Okay. Um, you know, more than anything. Mm -hmm. Um processed foods, fast foods, mm -hmm. convenience things um tend to have a lot of salt. Um you know, just generally not be, you know, as healthy as, you know, we can be. Mm -hmm. Um Focusing more on fresh foods is is nice, mm -hmm. you know, to help you know steer your diet in the right direction. Yeah, that's great, and it seems like people are becoming more aware of um, you know uh, eating healthier uh, with, and especially like it's awesome in our community. We're seeing more um, green spaces where they're doing more uh, uh, fresh food markets and that sort of thing, giving people more options. Exactly. To, uh, be healthy. So yeah. that's access a good is thing. big, and yeah. just knowing, you know, what are good choices. Mm -hmm. You know, what are some of the early signs for people to become aware that something's developing? You know, um, so that they can be aware to check it out. So the most common things that we see um, are things like chest pain, and a lot of people. Um, don't say that they actually have pain. They say, you know, I have mm -hmm. an ache or a discomfort or a heaviness or something just doesn't feel right. A lot of people um, don't use that word pain, you know, like like we do. Do you have chest pain? Well, no, I don't have any pain. I have, I have this ache. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that's something that um, shouldn't be ignored, um, especially if it's exertional. So if you're getting symptoms with walking up a flight of stairs or doing mm -hmm. something exertional or you're not able to do as much as you could, three months ago or six months ago, um, that's something that's concerning. Shortness of breath, fatigue. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes, you know, the classic, you know, symptoms are that chest heaviness right in the center of your chest goes to my left arm, makes me nauseous, sweaty, short of breath. Mm -hmm. But not everyone gets that. You know, some people get jaw pain, some people get a burning, some people mm -hmm. just feel generally unwell. Um, women and diabetics tend to have a little bit more atypical symptoms than men do. Um, so, you know, maybe it's, you know, both arms are achy or my jaw hurts or I'm getting this burning sensation. Mm -hmm. um, I can't do what I, you know, want to do. Um, those kinds of things uh, should be checked out. Yeah, not just chalk it up as, oh, I'm getting older and so I'm moving a little slower or, or that sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, we hear that a lot. Yeah. I gained some weight, so that's probably it. Or mm -hmm. I smoke and it's probably that, you yeah. know. Um, you know, a lot of people tend to push it off or say, oh, I'll try and sleep it off or see what happens. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, if something's, you know, really not feeling right, it's always better to get it checked out. Listen to your body. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, that, that's, um, that's good. How does a person detect that they have an arrhythmia? Like, what is that? What is an arrhythmia? 
So an arrhythmia is uh, a problem with the electrical portion of the heart. So the heart basically has plumbing and electrical. The plumbing is the arteries, gets the blood supply to the heart. The electrical makes the heart beat in a normal, you know, rhythmic fashion. Okay. So when the heart rhythm short circuits in some, you know, way, you can get arrhythmias. There's upper chamber arrhythmias and lower chamber arrhythmias. Lower mm -hmm. chamber arrhythmias tend to be more dangerous. Um, certain arrhythmias can make you feel lousy. Um, they can make you feel lightheaded or dizzy, heart okay. racing or skipping, short of breath, tired. Um, and depending on what kind it is, um, you know, there's different risks associated with arrhythmias. And you can actually feel it. Some people can feel it and some people don't. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but if you do feel it, the palpitations, uh, lightheaded, short of breath, dizzy, mm -hmm. um, some people get chest pain and just overall tired. You offer non-invasive services. Yeah, so I mean we use a lot of non-invasive testing, stress mm -hmm. tests, ultrasound, okay, or echoes, um, to screen people for heart disease and for surveillance and people that we already know have um, you know, heart disease. So, you know, those uh, things are uh, tools that we use to uh, risk stratify people and treat people, um, you know, based on, you know, their symptoms and their specific uh, problem. Mm -hmm. And how can a person who has heart disease in their family uh, be proactive? Um, I would say the number one thing they can do is know their risk factors and have a primary care physician. Mm -hmm. um, you know, someone that they see regularly for physicals, even if they're feeling well. Um, those uh, are the people that catch things um, early uh, and work on risk factors and, you know, modifying those risk factors. Um, you know, we see some people in the office for screening as well, um, but really primary care physicians play a huge role in preventive heart disease. Dr. Melissa Iannatelli, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate you uh, being our guest and giving us so much incredible information on cardiovascular health. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. Learn more about your risk for heart disease at mclaren.org slash macomb heart assess.